Hey, it's Sebo here from VR Division. Welcome back to a new video. Today, we're going to talk about Unreal Engine 5.2. It's still in preview, but we're going to talk about some of the upcoming features for the engine. And we're also going to take a look at some of yesterday's epic announcement. We have Unreal Editor, Unreal Engine coming to Fortnite. And now it's available in public beta. This will allow you to create games and experiences and publish them directly on Fortnite and play them with your friends, with your family, with whoever you want. This is really big. This is really the future of creating games. And this comes with Verse, the new programming language. Right now, it allows us to chain together devices and devices are things and gadgets and like logic in the game Fortnite. But Verse in, in essence, it's being designed as a programming language for the metaverse. With upcoming features to this language, it will enable future scalability to vast open worlds built by millions of players. Wow. Now, we also have the creator economy. So if you are going to create experiences for Fortnite, I mean, people are going to play these experiences. There is the Fortnite net revenue. 40% of that is going to the engagement payout pool. This is a new way of making a living as a game developer. If you are someone who likes to make games, who likes to make experiences, I would do this. I am going to try and do this. This is so much fun. Next, we have the Unreal Engine Marketplace, ArtStation Marketplace, Quicksand Mega Scans, and Sketchfab all being into one place that is called Fab fab.com you can check it out so we can think from environments to 3d assets to music to materials to 3d assets i said that twice so everything we need to build new worlds as it says here i like this headline and we also have the meta human animator with your phone now you can take a video and send it to unreal and with matter of minutes and few clicks you can create these animations the future for filmmakers is amazing so anyone who is a creator, who is an artist, who is a developer, the future is for us. Now, let's take a quick look at the public roadmap and talk about some of the features I'm excited about. For me, with every Unreal Engine release, I always get excited about Lumen, about Shadows, Nanite, and all that good stuff. So with Lumen, we can look at 5.1 and 5.2. We have improved global illumination and inclusion on characters for thin geometry such as bald, shirt, nose, ears, and so on. We have high fidelity reflections on translucency. Translucent objects look much better now. And we have more that you can read stuff on software ray tracing, hardware ray tracing, approximation, and how bounces approximate and work. So we will have even better lighting now, which is great. We also have better shadows, mainly ray traced shadows, and mainly on the rectangular lights. We also have improvements on path tracing. The path tracer in Unreal Engine 5.2 is getting more improvements. Subsurface shading is now better. We have mesh decal support and overall performance improvements for decals. Spline mesh support, finally, does great. And we have support for specular scale values in lights and more. We also have improvements on Nanite, some quality of life or performance. So we have additional feature supports if you want to create custom depth or stencils or you want to use Nanite with lighting channels, we can do that now. And we have global clip play and we have more updates on Nanite. We have Substrate, previously known as Strata, and this is a new way to author and create materials in Unreal Engine. And this modular framework provides with greater range of surface appearances and wider parameter space. So we'll have more control over the surfaces we want to create. And I think this will make it easier as well to bring things from different softwares. So we will see. This is still an experimental. Something to notice that path tracing is not yet supported on substrate materials. What I'm also excited about is the modeling tool. So we are getting the pattern tool allows us to create cool patterns and insert polygon edge. This is more continuous now. If you want to create edges on our meshes, we have improvements on the UV tools and we have improvements on the workflow in general. We have these boxes. I imagined like a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, wishing for something like this, where we can input values. So now we have that. We have numerical input, we have gizmo options, and we have snapping improvements. This is great. 
I love these tools because they allow me to stay inside the engine even longer without the need to go between my digital content creation tools. So I only imagine this would be get, getting better and better as they go. And we have more nodes for geometric scripting. We have improvements on the control rig. We have workflows for cinematics and animation authoring. We have physics control component. Look at this, this looks really fun. So the physics control component is a plugin that enables you to add simple, intuitive, and powerful physically-based controls to a blueprint. These help you take advantage of the benefits emerging with physical motion of static and skeletal meshes while retaining artistic gameplay control. And we have machine learning deformer, and this is still in beta. I saw Twitter post a couple of months, weeks ago on like the just the mesh looks right. They started the skeletal mesh here when it's like being deformed in extreme ways. So now we have machine learning in Android. Animations are just are going to keep getting better and better, which is great. We have workflow improvements on the audio parameter modulation. So new blueprint functions, modulation routing and so on. And we have a new meta sound nodes. So Berlin, low frequency noise and more. We also have XR development updates. This is very exciting. So Unreal Engine 5.2 brings further open XR combat, combat, combatability. Sorry. So XR creative framework, open XR vibe tracker. There is a lot to see here. And I'm not gonna act like I understand everything. I leave this for you to read. We also have Unreal native support on Apple Silicon. So this is really good for Apple users, but uh, Nanite and hardware ray tracing are not currently available on Mac OS because of hardware and API limitation. We have USD performance. So now it's easier and faster to work with USD files, universal scene descriptions. So we have interactive speed, caching for faster loading and reloading. That's really good. We have, in terms of simulation, we have Chaos Machine Learning Cloth in Beta. Wow, we have Chaos Flesh Simulation. This is still an experimental. This looks like Patrick from SpongeBob or some reason. We have Niagara Fluids. We will be able to do more simulations in real time. And we have and we have more improvements or quality of life improvements on the Chaos Destruction. We also have scriptable tools. We will be able now to create even better tools. Imagine what type of tools you're going to build with this. I can only imagine what you will be able. We have all of these good things happening. I'm really excited about the future of Unreal Engine and how artists are going to make use of these tools. I hope you found these news awesome. I hope you are excited as much as I am. And let me know in the comments which one of these things you are really excited about. With that said, I'm gonna stop the video here. I hope you like this one and I will see you very soon. Take care.